Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much, as always, for making your way here and checking out the series. You know what to do. If you uh, like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all your favorite artists. And I am so excited to once again be talking with Stephen Jenkins, Third Eye Blind, back with a new album called A Band Apart. Hello. Um, nice to be here with you again, Kyle. You look very comfortable, sir. I am. I'm uh, I'm uh, laying on my bed, um, as you know, one does when one does interviews uh, in uh, the Williamsburg Hotel in uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, New York. Nice, nice. I know you've been out there because, uh, well, one, there's the new album that you're premiering, A Band Apart, but also with the uh, the documentary screens that uh, went a part of that. How was, uh, how, how was that whole experience? Um, well, we're going to actually be screening it tonight. Uh, okay. And I am really pleased to be sharing this documentary uh about the making of our album, Our Band Apart, because it's, I think that it's just the most um, natural, real um, sense of what it's actually like uh, recording an album with Third Eye Blind. Um, if, so for, for people who are interested, what is that like? Um, you really get the feeling of it from this documentary. Yeah, yeah, I, I watched it last night, and it was. It's, it's yeah, it's great seeing the entire experience. Oh, what because, did you think? Who oh, cares I loved what it. I thought. <laughs> no, I seriously did. I I loved watching it. So let me back up though to first say how great the album is, and I mean this like, you know, I I've, I've been a fan for the whole ride or whatever. I, I always uh, enjoy hearing what you're doing. This sounds like a very classic. I don't mean it sounds old. I mean, this sounds like it will be a classic Third Eye Blind album, like immediately. Okay, you're, okay, so um, you're the first critic um, I've talked to who's actually listened to the album <laughs> so far. So um, it's very nice to get the feedback. I got a really nice review. We've gotten really nice reviews in Pitchfork and Stereo Gum um, uh, and uh, my... Uh, and spin i mean it's all been it's all been sort of great and you're the first critic i've talked to who's listened to the whole album so it makes me feel very good to hear that um, yeah. yeah i'm glad you enjoyed it it is it's a, let me say this i don't know how to say it without it sounding corny you make it sound easy like these songs they're so well put together and and then watching you know how the process is done once you're in the studio mm. I, I i'm sure it's not I, I know you know toiling over songs can be a process but yeah but it does sound easy by the end of mm. it. They sound sort of effortless in a way. You, you said a few things in the documentary um, about it. um, it's not extroverted. And you talked a, a little bit about simplifying. What, what did you mean, if I had that right? And maybe you were just talking about one song. I sort of took it as a grand phrase right there. No, it, that was kind of the overall gist of the record. So. I think that was something I was saying when I had brought these songs down to Hollywood because I live in San Francisco. So I drove down there and the rest of the band lives in, in Hollywood. And um, I was trying to give them a sense of where I was trying to go with the record. Um, and once I say all that, we get started. And then, and then as, um, as my ideas matriculate through these other musicians that make up Third Eye Blind, it just takes on a life of its own. Um, so, um, but but that idea of <clears throat> being, bringing your whole self to it without trying to, to put on a presentation, without being performative, without having those layers of, of defensiveness that kind of, you know, shield us um, in public space, all those things that we shed um, because we were, we didn't need them in the, in the lockdown. What I was trying to say was in the making of this record musically, let's keep that sensibility. Let's, and, and this is something I think that maybe you have this experience. I think, I think so many of us, particularly artists, um, in the pandemic, because we haven't been, um, in public space, we just become kind of more matter of fact and a little more real and a, a little more, um, just less razzle dazzle. And 
that's something I want to hold on to. And I definitely wanted to capture musically. So that that's definitely, hopefully there's a sprinkling of that in there that you recognized. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and maybe this kind of hits on what you're getting at too, because you also mentioned to a certain point that you were freed up from how, I think you said how you were supposed to sound or how you thought you were supposed to sound or how other people thought you were supposed to sound, mm -hmm. you know, as you went on that. So I'll, I'll turn around. First off, what was that? What was it you're, you know, what, what is that supposed to sound and what is the flip side? Oh, well, so, so we put out uh, the song to the sea um, and some of my fans were just furious. They're like, no, we want rocking guitars. What have you done? Where's the classic third of line? And it's just, you know, um, some people will just want to keep you like, you know, they want you to be like the little mosquito in the, in the Amber, you know, just like, mm -hmm. just, you're just locked in time. And I want to stay permeable to all of the times that I'm in. Um, and that's why, you know, when the whole lockdown started, I had a whole other album um, that we were going to workshop on tour and then um, um, record after that tour a year ago last March, but everything fell away. And then that album just didn't feel authentic to me. Um, so um, in the course of the, of, of the pandemic, I wrote another album that was just, you know, just me energetically, emotionally wrangling with the times that I was in. Um, and in making that, in making our band apart, you, you talked about it being, um, you, you said it sounded effortless. I was just like, I don't wanna try to make the song into something. It will be what it is. It doesn't have a place. I don't care. I don't give a fuck about what radio format it goes to. I don't care about whether it will fit in a movie or you know, how it'll sound here or there, what I just want the song to be, to have integrity and be whole in, in itself. And that's it. That's my only criteria. So that is actually a quite liberating way to, to be. Yeah. That song specifically too, that you started talking about there with To The Sea. When I first heard that, you and I had talked about um, Bon Iver, uh, a long time ago in a different interview. Yeah. And that was my first thought is like, is this the Bon Iver influence co finally coming through that uh, you and I had previously hit on? For sure. It is because Ryan Olson, who is a friend of Justin Ver Vernon's and has worked with him on lots of, of albums, um, actually came in and was um, a co-producer on that track. Mm -hmm. So you're hearing some of that Bon Iver um, five on there, like from, you know, the guys that like, were, were, um, actually, uh, make that shit. And I'm a, you know, I'm a huge fan of, of Justin's lands landscapes. Um, please don't live in fear was one of my favorite songs of, of, of the lockdown. It's just always something that's bold, always something that feels fearless and like inspires me to go, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to go forth. That song actually, um, Colin Holbrook, um, he made the, the beat for that. And um, um, I was inspired by it and I sang over it. So this is one of these songs that we, we wrote together and we were actually um, in uh, Lucadia on the ocean. So um, I was holding a mic and there's a lot of ocean sound coming into the microphone. And I said, I'm just going to sing the lyrics that I have here on this page, but I don't really know how they go because it's, it's just a journal entry that I, that I've mm -hmm. written. And I started to sing it to the sea and I had no idea how it was going to go out, put it on there. I fixed two words. I sent it to Ryan and I said, this is a, this is a rough vocal. I mean, I just sang it once and he goes, yeah, it's not a rough vocal. That's the vocal. And I was just like, in there. no, I yeah. only sang it once. And he goes, well, we're not changing it. So, the first time I ever opened my mouth on that is what you hear on the record. Replete with the ocean. Yeah. So, but that's, but that's can beautiful. I tell, can I share something else with you about this? Because you're saying that it sounds effortless. Um, we had Jeff Schroeder come in from Smashing Pumpkins. And um, this is because we were recording our band apart in um, so, uh, kind of near Silver Lake in Eagle Rock in LA. 
at this really cool studio. And he lived nearby there and heard we were there and just said he wanted to come over and hang out. And it's an interesting thing because it's just like musicians just, you know, have been locked away who like just wanted to go be with each other. Um, but he comes over and I go, look, if you're here, you know, you're in the band, so you got to play. So um, we were doing this song, um, Funeral Singers. And um, so the idea when we record, and this is what you can see in, when, you, when you watch the documentary, is we all, we all track it once. And people just don't do that on recordings anymore. So we played it. We go, mm -hmm. I think let's try it a little faster because we also didn't have click tracks or anything. Let's try it a little slower. Let's try it a half step up. Mm, let's try it two steps down. It's kind of like going on and on like this. And, um, and they're like, I like the solo that you did on the last one, that one. Should we listen back to it? No, let's just go play it again. Anyway, so we would go in and out of the room each time because Nobody, you don't get to fix your stuff. We just play it together. We played that song 23 times. Wow. And the 23rd take, and we're all in good spirits. We're all just still feeling it. We're all in the hunt. The 23rd take, we're like, I like this one. Let's go with this one. So it was An effortless, effortless on 23rd, the 23rd take. take. <laughs> yes. Glad we were there together. Funeral Singers was a nice surprise. Uh, it's it's the cover on here, and and it's an amazing song. Uh, I first heard it, of course, when Sylvanesso had had covered it, and um, and and I apologize, I don't even remember who did the original version, but but I'd love to know what spoke to you about that song because it is one of the best songs of probably the last decade. So I heard it from Sylvanesso, and it's what it's what actually turned me on to uh, to, to them, and just come, got me into their whole groovy, dancey vibe. And um, I just felt like making an album that was kind of my, you know, um, <laughs> um, the. the uh, the uh, the San Francisco Chronicle said uh, Stephen sings the the pandemic blues. You know, it's like I couldn't like I couldn't have I couldn't feel like I did it without that song on there because I listened to her singing this, and to me, um, all my friends are words. Um, you know, all my friends are funeral singers. It's like, you know, um, to me you know, that we're lighthouse keepers. Like it's all, we're, we're all this kind of isolation and this, um, it, it, to me, it was singing, it was singing what, how the pandemic felt. It put it into a structure to me. Um, and I heard it in a, clearly in a very different way. Mine is like, like Sylvanesos is this flowing kind of almost sense of whimsy. Um, it's, it's, it's ethereal. And then, you know, my version is, um, I don't know, Judas Priest, I guess. Right. There's a lot it's, of it's Judas quite a bit more rocked up, yeah. 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 Um, so it's kind of a romp. And um, that's just kind of the way I heard it. You know, all, like, like all my friends, you know, and this kind of like, um, I just heard this kind of glorious rage in it. But it, um, they were definitely a... Um, There's a plane landing in the river right there. And it's freaking me out. Wow. Is there okay. a plane? Uh, yeah, like, but it's like a um, it's like a um a prop. It's got a, you know, uh pontoons. Right, um, right. So it looks like it, it it's supposed to be landing there, but it's still a little bit trippy. Yeah. Um yeah. There's like there's, you know, Manhattan. Um, there's Brooklyn out there. So ta-da. Right, right, anyway. right. Well, that's you know. And again, it, it is, it's a fantastic version uh, of Funeral Singers. I never listened to this record oh, thinking that you had the pandemic blues. Uh, I knew the pandemic played a part of it. What I did hear sometimes was you trying to grab at something. And I always, I, I, I wasn't always sure exactly what you were trying to grab at. Um, looking at a few songs here, like uh, Silver Lake Neophyte. It's only when you talked about it in the documentary about the insecurities of being a musician or, or goodbye to the days of ladies and gentlemen. You know, I like 
some of the fun of being a fan of you and, and how you write is wondering, are you taking the piss out of something or are you trying to grab at something, you know, to grasp, I, I guess I should say. I don't know. A am I far off from maybe what was going on speaking no, of those two songs? That, no, not at all. You're, you're, you're really, you're really right on the money. It's just that the money is in both places. It's, you can be trying to grasp, you can be trying to achieve, but you can also be taking the piss at the same time. And that is, you know, I was, that's exactly what Silver Lake Neophyte is because part of this album is me kind of falling in love with Los Angeles. Um, I, and I used to really not like LA and now I, I, I kind of love it. I mean, it, it's kind of like d dear to me. And um, I was really taken with the um, LA neo folk scene. Um, there's a kind of, but there's this kind of thing, um, you know, and it's inspired, it's kind of a Gen Z kind of thing of, of being like radically transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something about that that's, that's, that's very um, appealing. But there's also part of it that feels like uh, it's like um, exhibitionism um, to me. So, so I, I would hear these artists and just go, okay, so you're singing like that. And I'm really kind of feeling it. Um, but I'm also hearing the Elliott Smith chords and I'm, I'm kind of blown away. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm really inspired. Like, you know, when I heard Adrian Lenker, mm -hmm. I'm just like, if I, you know, I said this uh, in a, th in a I, um, I did a playlist for AP and I said, I hate it when people ask you, who's your favorite artist right now? You know, I'd never have an answer. But if I was forced, I would say Adrian Lenker because like the, the, the warmth and, and um, um, honesty that she brings is really quite amazing. And we're talking about um, Big Thief, right? Well, with she's a big thief, but she just, yeah, the solo album. and big thief. Yeah, she has a she has a um, an album um, out called Songs, and I just mm -hmm. you know listen to listen to two reverse. It's just an, uh, to me, it's just amazing. And before her album came out, and before there was really any any hype, I heard um, Garden Song by Phoebe Bridgers, and um, you know again that kind of that landscape and the, and that and that she has this this real discipline of being honest in every note um, really, really kind of impressed me. And I kept listening to more and more artists. And then I'm like, okay, I'm beginning to hear like this. I'm, I'm, I was almost intimidated. I'm like, wow, do I have, like, am I willing, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of looking at myself and I'm like, every songwriter feels this way. But at the same time, I'm also like, you know, is this kind of a pose? And as I was imagining myself being, um, you know, like j back to being like, a, you know, a singer songwriter and open mic night. And, um, and I was like, well, if you're being honest, that's actually what you're, that's what you're thinking about right now. So sing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there and I just kind of just went through these, went through these issues of, um, how we are always there's no such thing as discovering yourself you invent yourself we are inventions and we are these we are always these kinds of concoctions um and um i think we have to make a little more space um for that um for for this this journey of invention that we're all on even if we have to take the piss out of each other a little bit. Yeah. Well, that so. part makes it that makes it so fun. I, I agree with you too. I mean, hearing those artists the first time, Adrian, Phoebe, uh, in, any of the, the, the new crew, you know, that's been sort of hitting the, these styles. There is that moment where to me, it is new to most people. It's new, but because I guess I'm older than them, you know, it's that second, like, what is this and how do I listen to this? Uh, I started thinking about like when Laura Nero, would have come on the scene, you know, in the yeah. late 60s, early 70s. And it probably felt a lot like that, you know? Yeah. Too. So. Very much so. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. I guess it's like, you know, the more things change, the more they say that I don't, I don't exactly know what I'm getting at there, but, uh, but I do no, understand it, what you're getting at. <laughs> but, but I do feel like I do felt a real fresh energy that inspired me. And, um, you know, I, I, I live for that moment in music where I'm getting freaked. And I definitely felt that in the scene. And, um, so Silver Lake Neophyte is kind of, um, it's just kind of a ode to, um, to, um, not only just like the songwriter's dilemma, but also to like how, how we're, we're, we're trying that, that the process that we're all in of, of coming into the fullness of self and, um, you know, even though that's, there's probably a lot of posing that goes on in that, um, in that, in that thing, you know, so. Well, it's still so you, entertainment at the yeah. end of the day. So, yeah. 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 Um, I do appreciate, though, there are a few really comfortable spots. I say comfortable spots, like um, for all of the new things that you're also doing in here, you, you do give a, a, a few nods to the past, I, as I hear it anyway, at the beginning of Dust Storm, my first thought was, is that the cure? Are they doing the cure on purpose right now? Yes. It's the baseline, it's the drug, it's all there. It's like, tell me that's on purpose. It's just, it's just rip. I mean, well, let's put it this way. You know, um, my guitar tech, Danny, who's kind of like, he's like this, he's like this, I don't know what he is in our band, but he's very important. He's always around. Um, he goes, because it's the best Cure song ever written. Um, <laughs> and it's like, um, that song came together because Chris, my guitar player, um, um, was just, um, you know, just fucking around while we were um, um, working songs out in West Hollywood. And he had this Nashville tuning on a guitar and he went, dun 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 I go, what's that? And he had already forgot it. You know, it's, it's, he has the, he has the, just, he's like a hummingbird. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, that, that, what did you just play? Play that again. And I had to like, and I, I actually have that on, um, uh, on, on my phone recorder. I was like, play it again. And um, he did. And um, I just started to sing along to it. And um, that's how that song came together. Um, but you know, the cure influence was there and we're like, we'll just let it be influenced by the cure. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, have at it. It's, it, it was never like, we never went, we're going to go, you know, do our take on in between days or anything like that. It's, it, it came from a real, um, a real place. And I, and I do believe in the Buddhistic sense of like, um, you know, your, your initial intention is the most important indicator on the, on the outcome of something. So, so it had its own little big bang, a moment of inspiration. And that inspiration um, was then, um, you know, sort of um, guided by our forefathers in, in, you know, by Robert Smith. So I love that. I love the yeah. way, yeah, that you put that. I'll um, I'll wrap up by asking the least important question and maybe the most important question. If you've seen the documentary, who got the five dollars at the end of this all? Should I tell you? Okay. Well, we have to set it up. Um, so um, I was walking up the street and I found five dollars, and I just I just thought it was like I was like, well, this just means everything. It's just going to be great. And I'm like, this is very important. Five dollars. So when I went into the studio, I said. Uh, this is a lucky $5 and it's going to go to the most exemplary musician at the end of this. It's, we took 10 days to record the record. And uh, I said, at the end of this, it, it's going to go to whoever's, you know, the best. And um, it went to our bass player, Cav. Yes. It's most won. exemplary. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> He's Good on so him. Great. Good on him. Yeah. He's got another $5 yeah. to his name. So. <laughs> and somehow I just love seeing him like, you know, I, lo I love seeing him play um, because he, he does so much for our band. And when you watch, um, when you watch him 
play in the documentary, you can just see how like deeply connected and like how, how, how much like joy he's getting. Like he's just kind of beaming with joy in the, in this, like in this connection to the track. And it, I think it shows up on the album yeah. because of him. Totally worth $5. What did he do? Buy a burrito with that? Hang it on the wall? What do you, what do you I do with that? Know what he, I don't, I just don't know. He likes coffee and that, you know, so um, that'll get you the coffee. Um, if you're willing to stiff somebody on the tip, um, you know, in, uh, in the greater Silver Lake area. <laughs> well, um, Stephen, uh, it is, it's such a great record to band apart. Um, what you all are doing, what you're doing, uh, it, you know, not every artist can pull it off you know, this far into the game. So dude, congratulations on this. I really do love this album. Uh, just that, just, uh, thank you. It really warms my heart to hear that. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for having me. You too, man. We'll do this again next time. Uh, in the meantime, take care. And uh, I hope you have a great time tonight with the, uh, the, the premiere. I hope everyone enjoys it as much as I do. Indeed. Thank you. All right, man. Take care. Bye. Cheers.